Hi, I'm Mary Yates and I have been into photography since I was a little kid. I, I have, came from a photography family and decided to pursue it as the art form that I love the most. I'm going to give you a brief demo of black and white uh, print processing and show you everything from chemical setup to making test strips and a final print. So let's get started. First, we have very importantly labeled trays. We, do, we want to avoid cross-contamination. So this uh, is developer here. We have our stop bath. For the purposes of the prints we're making today, we're going to be substituting water for that. If you're using a nice fiber-based paper, you might want to use an acetic acid-based stop bath. But for something that's an RC paper, which is, means resin coated, it's a plastic coating on the paper. It doesn't require as much um, finesse as something with a fiber-based paper. So we can just substitute water here, but otherwise we'd be using a mixture of acetic acid uh, known as stop bath. Our fixer is our final step, and this is what makes the print able to go in the light. It takes all the latent image that <laughs> we've created on our picture, solidifies it, hardens it, makes it so we can put it in a rinse and then take it outside and enjoy it forever. The first thing we're going to do is set up our chemistry so we're prepared to, to make our prints. And I'm starting, this is an Ilford multi-grade developer. This is a brand. You can get Kodak. There's all sorts of other chemistry, but this is what we're using here. The dilution rate on any kind of chemical you purchase for the darkroom is going to be listed right on the label. So it'll tell you to dilute one to nine for this particular one. So we're gonna do, let's start with three ounces of chemical. Pour carefully over the sink. Always important for beakers to be level, so you're reading that correctly. All right, we look like we have our three ounces of developer. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. I'm using my developer label beaker, I might add. And we have misplaced the top, so is anybody see? <laughs> it's right there, thank you so much. All right. So we have three ounces here, and now we need to add our one to nine, di or nine dilution. So, Go ahead and get twenty six ounces of plain cold water. We use cold water for developing instead of warm because it causes the grain. If we use a, a warm water, the particulates of silver that are embedded into our paper will swell up and get very large and gonna cause a grainy appearance. You can do that on purpose if that's your creative decision. You want it to look like an old timey sort of image with a lot more grain. You can also hot process film to achieve the same thing. But for the purpose of our demonstration, we're just gonna use our standard cold water bath, which should keep our silver particles nice and tight when we develop them so we won't see as much grain. All right, always important, wipe your hands, clean your hands between touching chemicals. I, I like to keep my hands rinsed <laughs> so we don't have cross-contamination. And our next chemical that we would use if we were doing a fiber print again is an acetic acid-based stopped bath. Today we're gonna use water though, so I'm just gonna take this, get it to about the same level I have my developer maybe a little deeper. The important thing when you're using water for your stop bath is to remember to change the liquid uh, every 10 or so prints to keep it fresh so that it's actually doing what, what you need it to do. The last chemical we're gonna use for basic print development is Fixer. I'm also using an Ilford. This is a rapid fixer, so it works more quickly than certain fixers. It's also got a hardening agent in it. You can get fixers 
that don't have hardening in it. Um, and there are different reasons for that. For instance, if you're going back in and scratching and altering your print afterwards, that might be a helpful thing. But for us, we're just gonna mix this. It is one to four or one to nine. I like it to work really quick, so I'm gonna do one to four. ounces here, U.S. fluid ounces, I think this beaker in particular is uh, marked with both English and U.S. Just make sure you're using consistently which one you measure out first, otherwise it doesn't matter. So we have our chemicals set up. Our chemicals always go towards our water source. So we've got developer, stop bath, fixer, and the final is a rinse. If you're using fiber-based paper again versus RC paper, you might want to have a fourth bath and that would be fixer remover. It is uh, something that will help once it's been in the uh, fixer, kind of pull that out so your rinse time is reduced. And that's really important for fiber-based paper because that fiber really soaks up the chemistry and we want to get everything very clean before we take it out. If it's not, you can sometimes get little crusty pieces of dried chemical on your prints, and that's not so lovely. All right. So we also have a couple of safe lights in the dark room here. We want to make sure these aren't cranked open really high because they will fog our paper. So just um, these are actually very bright when we turn off the light. I'm going to show you now as I take our light out. So these take about 10 minutes to get to their uh, full brightness. And you can see it's actually, we can see pretty well here in the dark, even with those safe lights. 